Hey guys, today we are going to look at the slope formula a little bit further. We're going to answer the question, how can I find a missing x or y value using the slope formula? So remember the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, where m is the slope and the two ordered pairs are x1, y1 and x2, y2. So if you are missing any part of this, specifically one of the x values or one of the y values, but we're given the slope, then we can set up an equation and solve to find the missing value. We're gonna use the following steps. So the first and most important step is you want to label the information that is given to you. If you don't do this, then you might set it up wrong and then you're automatically gonna get your answer wrong. So make sure that you do this. So we're gonna label the points and then we're gonna label the slope as M. Then after we label, we will substitute what we're given into the slope formula and then we will be able to solve this equation using cross multiplication um, since it'll be a proportion with two ratios set equal to each other we're going to be able to cross multiply to solve it so let's look at the first one very first thing i want to do is label so this is already labeled with the slope m and then this will be x1 y1 and x2 and y2 and now I'm gonna write down the slope formula so that we can substitute into it. y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So let's substitute in the slope. m is 3 halves. And it equals y2 minus y1, so negative 7 minus negative 4. all over x2 minus x1. We don't know what x2 is, so I'll just leave it as x. So I'm gonna put x minus zero on the bottom. Okay, before I cross multiply, I'm going to see if I can simplify the numerator and or the denominator in this fraction, which it looks like I can. So that ratio three over two is most simplified. Seven minus negative four is the same thing as negative seven plus four, so negative three. All over x minus zero is just x. Okay, now I want to solve for x, so I am going to cross multiply. And three times x is three x, and negative three times two is negative six. And then my last step to get x by itself is divide by 3. So I get x equals negative 2. And then we could check this by plugging in negative 2. So the points would be 0 minus negative 4. And we just figured out what x is. It's negative 2 and negative 7. So we can plug into the slope formula to check it. Negative 7 minus negative 4 all over negative two minus zero. Negative seven minus negative four is negative three. Negative two minus zero is negative two, which simplifies to three halves, which is what they told us the slope was. So we did this correctly. All right, let's look at number two. So this time I'm missing a y value. It's still going to be the same process. I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, and y2. And let's write out the slope formula. Negative, or sorry, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Okay, so now I want to substitute in negative 9 halves for the slope. So let's think about some ways that we could write this with the negative. So this equals negative 9 over 2 or you could do a nine over negative two. So this number is negative. If we do a negative divided by a positive, that gives us a negative. If we do a positive divided by a negative, it gives us a negative. You cannot do negative nine over negative two because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So whenever you are setting up your equation, I would put the negative either in the numerator or in the denominator, but not both. And I wouldn't just stick it out into the front either. 
put it with the nine or with the negative two so that you are really clear where it's going when you cross multiply. I'm going to put it in the numerator. So I'm replacing m in the slope formula with negative nine over two with the negative in the numerator. Okay, now I'm going to do y2 minus y1, so y minus negative four, all over x2 minus x1, so negative five minus negative three. Okay, so negative nine over two doesn't simplify. Y minus negative four, I can change that to y plus four, and then negative five minus negative three is the same thing as negative five plus three, so negative two. Okay, and now I can cross multiply to solve for y. Negative nine times negative two is 18. And then two times y plus four, that is not just two times y. It is two times all of y plus four. So now to solve this equation, I need to distribute and I get 18 equals two y plus eight. And then we would subtract eight and get 10 equals two y and then divide by two so we get y equals five. And if you wanted to substitute it back into the slope formula to double check, you could. All right, let's look at number three. So I'm missing this x2 value. So if I label x1, y1, x2, y2, and then my slope is two. So remember, we're gonna end up cross multiplying here. So when I put it in my equation, I'm gonna go ahead and put two over one because that's equivalent to two. And now I have something to multiply when I do the cross multiplication. So let's write down slope formula. And now I can substitute in y2 minus y1, or sorry, I need to put the slope first. So we talked about how we're gonna put two over one for the slope. And then y2 minus y1, so six minus negative two, all over x2 minus x1, so r minus negative three. Okay, now I'm just gonna simplify this a little bit. I'm gonna keep this as two over one since I have to cross multiply. Six minus negative two is the same thing as six plus two, so eight. And then r minus negative three, a little more proper way to write that is r plus three. And now I can cross multiply. So I'm gonna have two times all of r plus three equals eight times one, so eight. And then I would distribute and I get two r plus six equals eight. And then we subtract six and get two r equals two, and then divide by two, so r equals one. All right, number four, I'm gonna start by labeling the information they gave us. This time I'm finding x1, and then my slope is already in fraction form. Just make sure that the negative only goes in one part of the fraction, so I'll put it in the numerator. So let's write down slope formula. So slope is negative one fifth, and then y2 minus y1 will be eight minus seven, all over x2 minus x1, so 11 minus r. And now let's simplify this, negative one fifth doesn't simplify any further, eight minus seven is one, 11 minus r, that is most simplified already. And now we can cross multiply. So I'm gonna have negative one times all of 11 minus r equals five times one, so five. And now I'm going to distribute and I get negative 11 plus r equals five. And then all I have to do is add 11 and that shows me that r 
equals 16. All right, let's look at number five. So my slope is negative four. I want that in fraction form. So I'm gonna make that negative four over one when I plug in to my formula. Let's label our points and write down the slope formula. So slope is negative four over one y2 minus y1 would be negative 7 minus r all over 1 minus negative 3. And I can simplify just one part here. The negative 7 minus r won't simplify, but 1 minus negative 3 is the same thing as 1 plus 3, so 4. And now I'm going to cross multiply to solve. So negative four times four is negative 16. And one times negative seven minus r will remain negative seven minus r. And now to get r by itself, I'm going to add seven and I get negative nine equals negative r. So you could think of that as an invisible one there. So to get r by itself, I need to divide by a negative one. And nine divided by negative, negative nine divided by negative one is positive nine. All right, last one. It tells us that the slope is undefined. So let's think about an undefined slope. An undefined slope is when we have a number being divided by zero. And that's what makes it undefined because we cannot divide by zero. So for this part, if you notice I'm finding a missing x value, it doesn't even really matter what I have on the top of my fraction for slope. I know that it's going to be zero on the bottom. So if I plug into slope formula, This is x1, y1, x2, and y2. So my slope is some number on the top. It really does not matter what it is, but it's undefined, so I know that there's a zero on the bottom. y2 minus y1 is going to be five minus four, and then x2 minus x1 is gonna be r minus one. So with undefined slopes, they're a little bit special. All I want is the denominator to equal zero. So I'm just going to use that equation right there. Zero equals r minus one. I know the change in my x's has to be zero since it's an undefined slope. And all I would do there to get the change in x to be zero is make r one. Another way you could think of it is undefined slopes have the same x values. So that is why r has to be one because the other x value was one.